Hi everyone, um, thank you so much for joining us today for a bit of festive book chat. Um, I'm Charlotte Ellis and I am one of the associate editors at Mills and & Boone and today I'm joined by three of our lovely authors, Ellie Darkins, Annie O'Neill and Sophie Pembroke. Hi ladies! Hello! Hi everyone! Okay. Uh, where are you all joining us uh, from today? Uh, I am in my study at home in Warwickshire so Shakespeare country. <laughs> I'm in my living room in Sussex, uh, William the Conqueror country. <laughs> what about the William? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my study, which uh, is just about far enough away from my daughter's oboe lesson that you don't have to hear her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh well wonderful and thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to be um, chatting about your festive reads um, as well as having some Christmassy fun um, and we'll also be taking some audience questions at the end of the session so please do pop your comments um, and questions in the comment section um, and if you do you're actually going to automatically be entered into a competition to win a copy of each of these fabulous authors books so even more incentive for you to ask a question. Um, but for now, to get us even more in the Christmas spirit, um, I'm going to start off by asking you some of your, uh, for some of your Christmas favourites. So your Chris your favourite Christmas movie, your favourite song for Christmas and your favourite Christmas food. So whoever wants to go first. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, well, I love, Love Actually is my current favourite Christmas movie, but it also, I suppose, would have a fist fight with It's a Wonderful Life. So if we're going to old and new, those are my two faves. Two classics. It's hard to Absolutely. Yeah. So Christmas song, because I'm now a cow farmer away in a manger, because <laughs> whenever I go up and see the cows, <laughs> I'm like, how would Jesus deal with this farm? <laughs> like, I better tidy it up a bit more. <laughs> practicalities. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Christmas food, all of it. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> I would have to go Die Hard, Last Christmas, Mince Pies. Also yeah. solid choices. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and how about you, Sophie? Muppets Christmas Carol. Ah, oh, yeah. 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 Um, I think favourite song would be Oh Holy Night, but only as sung by my cousin David. Um, and food, Pigs and Blankets. Oh, oh yeah. Pigs and Blanket. Good call. Excellent part. Um, well, now the viewers have got to know a little bit about each of you, um, oh, let's hear it all about your book. Um, so, Ellie, why don't you kick us off um, and you can introduce us to Snowbound at the Manor. Yeah, I have one here. Uh, this is Rufus and Jess, um, and it's a classic snowed in with a stranger story. Um, they're snowed in at Rufus's manor house, and Ruth. Uh, Jess is a bit of a Grinch, she doesn't like Christmas, but they end up having to stage like a picture perfect Instagram Christmas to try and launch the manor on social media and then there's shenanigans. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> way. Oh, brilliant. Um, and Annie, how about you with um, yours is Christmas Under the Northern Lights? Christmas correct? Under the Northern Lights. And this is about Audrey and Cooper. Audrey has just uh, recently found her fiance rocking around the Christmas tree with someone who's not her. Um, so has gotten herself a gig as a district nurse up in a, the remotest Scottish island where no one should be attractive except that plan goes wrong pretty much immediately because GP, visiting GP Cooper is a hottie and hijinks ensue. Hijinks. Uh -huh. Oh yes, Christmas holiday hijinks. <laughs> oh, um, and how about you, Sophie? Tell us all about a midnight kiss to seal the deal. I have one here too. Um, this is <laughs> the second part of my uh, Cinderella's in the Spotlight Christmas duet. So there's part one, just for you know. Very good. So everyone. <laughs> and this one starts on. Uh, well, at a Christmas cranium cracker quiz on TV where um, the heroine Celeste gets into a bit of a fight with the uh, host Theo about what the right answers are. Um, anyway, <laughs> and they, uh, because of the fallout of this screening on Christmas Eve, end up having to fake a relationship 
all the way through to New Year to try and re rehabilitate their reputations. Um, but they are absolute opposites on paper. But when they start pretending, it suddenly starts feeling quite real. Brilliant. Oh, they all sound so wonderful. I want to read them all. Um, although I have been asked to sign something already. <laughs> Sorry, say that again, Annie. I've just being asked to sign something. <laughs> yeah. That's all done. That's all Santa's right. list done and dusted. I don't demand, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm reliably informed that there are some really lovely Christmas traditions featured in each of your books. Um, so I want to know how um, each of you decided to include the bits and pieces that you did. So I know it's like building snowmen, Christmas shopping, um, helping with nativity plays. Um, so how did you all decide to include what you did? Um, I don't mind going first. Uh, so I was thinking about this today and I think mine is largely wish fulfillment <laughs> because I've got small children. So Christmas is wonderful. It's a joy. It's chaotic and there's paper and tinsel everywhere. So the idea of doing what Jess and Rufus do, which is mainly book blanket fire, <laughs> just <laughs> seems so really <laughs> <laughs> So it, it's a bit of escapism for, for me, really. <laughs> it was, I wrote it over Christmas, a very chaotic Christmas, and it was just like this dreamy, <laughs> quiet space <laughs> to go fall in love. So <laughs> I think that's mainly where mine came from. I think I had similar wish fulfillment and that every year I try to organize my schedule months in advance so that I have the time to make all the gingerbread cookies and the sugar cookies and go around the neighbors and put up my tree weeks in advance and it just never ever happens and I just thought I'm gonna I want it so that there's nothing else you start there's nothing else to do but just be full of Christmas joy that sounds amazing. Aww. And how about you, Sophie? Mine was wish fulfillment as well, in a way, because um, I wrote these two books at the start of lockdown, and I was missing London. Um, and so it's Christmas in London. It's all the things that I didn't get to do this year mm -hmm. in London for Christmas. Um, and because I was writing two books set in, at the same Christmas, obviously I had to pick different activities for both of them. So the first one is slightly more absolute Christmas, you've got the office parties, you've got the Christmas window displays, you've got all that sort of thing. The, set, so the second one is looking slightly different things. So we've got ice skating at the Tower of London, we've got cocktails in an igloo on a roof in London and all those sort of things. So uh, yeah. I want to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in that book. <laughs> I think that's really cheap escape from um, especially the festive traditions are so important and so lovely to have because I want to do all those things that I haven't been able to do. Um, is, this the first book <laughs> is this the first book that you've all set um, and written at Christmas or have you done previous ones as well? I love writing Christmas books. I love it. It's just, I don't, it's because, I suppose, because people just have such hope for kindness and happiness and joy and things are superimposed with that little bit of extra twinkle that you're just like, oh, it was Christmas magic that made this happen. And I just, I love it. <laughs> I, just, I think a good like 30, 40% of my books must somehow be Christmassy and I'm not sure how I keep swinging it with the schedule, but every year I'm like, oh, do you need a Christmas book? Do you need a Christmas book? No. We don't need one next year. I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> first one I've had like incidental Christmas before but not like full Christmas Christmas book which I think is why I just threw so much Christmas at it like I started writing it and I was like well if I'm doing Christmas and I'm doing snowed in like it's not subtle so <laughs> there's no point going for subtlety so I'm just gonna mm. keep throwing Christmas at it so I just threw snow at it and glitter and tinsel and candles <laughs> and more snow and I got very carried away. <laughs> well, you're right, you can't escape if you're trapped in a castle. You can't escape Christmas. Like, there's no way to go. So I think it was really nice coming to it with a clean slate and just not having done any of it before and just throwing anything I wanted to it. But I'm writing next year's Christmas book now and I'm like, what? what's left? <laughs> used all the 
the Christmas. Yeah. Oh, Christmas magic is uh, this, but I don't want to say bottomless pit because that doesn't sound pretty. A lovely northern light vortex. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a never-ending mine of festivity exactly um and this one's um really one that's more for um annie and ellie um because your heroines jess and audrey as i think you mentioned earlier Ellie, that they both hate christmas um so they're kind of real grunches are these inspired by anybody you know or were they um who were grinches in real life or completely fictional <laughs> No, I come from Christmassy people. <laughs> like my dad and my brother, they try to pretend that they're not into it, but they really, really are. <laughs> so no, we're Christmas through and through. Now, I don't really come from Grinchy folk. I would say, I've just remembered though, actually, I had a Christmas where I'd been dumped right before Christmas. Oh, um, hey. <laughs> yeah. It was such a dark moment. <laughs> But it, uh, uh, it was a dark moment. Oh. But it was, uh, <laughs> Next book. It's all material. It's all material. It's right, it's <laughs> right here. But it, I think, because I, I love that time of year so much, even if you're that grinchy and that sad and that upset, there's something about all those twinkly lights and those delicious biscuits <laughs> and the yummy cakes and snacks that you just can't help but be be teased out of your grinchitude <laughs> yeah there must be something everyone likes even if they don't like christmas there's the food and so much more that there's got to be something for everyone absolutely i think i had tacos that year for christmas <laughs> she's like my rebellion i'll show you world i'll have tacos <laughs> i think taco christmas sounds good <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, now we bizarrely we have tacos every Christmas Eve. See, it started. Oh. Yeah, oh, love that. Um, so yeah, speaking of Christmas traditions, are there, is there anything else you like to do around Christmas bar the Christmas Eve tacos? Oh, we have um, Christmas pudding. It was a matter of contention because in my family, I'm from America, we were pie people, fruit pie people. So there would be like usually an apple pie, maybe a pecan pie. Um, and that was kind of, that's what you have for dessert. And then when I moved over here and met and married my Scottish husband, they were trifle folk. And I hadn't even heard of trifle. And then it turned out- hmm? No, carry on. It turned out my husband didn't like trifle. So then I took over, I was became commander of Christmas meal. And my husband's like, don't make trifle. So, okay, what do we make? And then it turned out, Everything, every the one thing everyone loved was cheesecake, except for me. I hate cheesecake, but I thought I'll make it for them because it's Christmas and I'm full of love. And so one day, and I make the kind of New York cheesecake, you know, with the spring form pan and the water bath and all that kind of stuff. This is a really long story, sorry. And then, so I'm walking to the oven, it's Christmas Eve, and my spring form pan springs and the cheesecake goes into the water bath. My husband was the only one in the kitchen at the time. He's like, I think I'll just go get it. Everybody keep them busy for a little while. I was like, that is a terrific idea. Yeah. And the only thing I could think was I had chocolate chip cookie dough and some ice cream. So I thought we'll have ice cream sandwiches for Christmas dessert. And then my nephew came to me, he's like, I'm going to shoot no offense to your cheesecake, but can we always have ice cream sandwiches? And I'm like, yes, yes, we can. <laughs> Much <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Sophie? Oh, we have so many Christmas traditions in my family. There is actually a book. Um, and I, it needs updating because I last updated it in 2000. So we're 20 years out of date now. So it definitely needs an update. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. We, oh, maybe I did it. Maybe I did it in 2010. I might have done it in 2010. I think it is a 10 year thing, but I don't feel like this is the year to, to, to try that. <laughs> um, we have, so my mum's birthday is Christmas Day. And for her 18th birthday, and she's 66 this year, but for her 18th birthday, the family went to a fancy restaurant for a Christmas meal. Um, and I think they did it on Christmas Day. But ever since that, we've gone the Sunday before Christmas. And we used to go to a restaurant called The Boat, and it was always called Boat Sunday. Um, and as the family has grown, there's like 50 of us now, because it's not just my family, it's the aunts and uncles and cousins, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, 
and we've changed where we go and sometimes we've gone midweek but it's still always called boat sunday even though we haven't been to the boat in years um and, and that's that's our big christmas tradition we go we have a big fancy meal um we have the cracker hats we have the silly jokes we get the guitars out and there's a lot of singing um and now the kids tend to go and put on a show in the corner somewhere and we do the secret santa gifts because there's too many to buy for everybody so everyone gets born um and that would be on sunday and we're not going to do it on zoom, we're gonna do it on zoom. it's going to be okay <laughs> you have a whole book worth of tradition equation for working out when boat sunday falls which is you know it's a bit like easter but slightly more complicated with when flights are coming into canada and who can travel up from london well and things like that um and we have traditions throughout the year there are a number but christmas is particularly focused on how about you ellie do you have any festive traditions we have lots i'm from a big family i've got four brothers and sisters um and at the moment we are in the midst of my mum's advent whatsapp quiz she stopped sending us um advent calendars when we we're about 25 which frankly i think is unreasonable but instead we have a whatsapp advent quiz so you get one point for a correct answer to the trivia question but there are points up for grabs for um, musical interpretations, extra trivia, um, artwork, jokes, funny memes. Um, so yesterday, I can't even remember what the question was, but the answer was Richard III, which is my specialist subject because I'm a history nerd. So I got 11 points just from trivia, which <laughs> my brother and sister were not happy about. So my... <laughs> They should oh, have said brother, yeah. created the death of Richard III with, he had Richard III written across his forehead and a crown <laughs> and a baseball bat, which I think was just standing in for any blunt weapon you'd find on a battlefield. Um, and then my sister wasn't happy that we were taking the lead. <laughs> so she created a mixed media collage of Richard III <laughs> I love how competitive <laughs> out on the window next to her Christmas tree, like admiring her tree. So it all gets very competitive. <laughs> and it's only the 17th. We've got another week to go. <laughs> and I don't know where it goes from here, but I'm top of the leaderboard after yesterday. I was going to say who's top of the leaderboard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my like points just nudged me ahead. My older brother was in the lead, but he only got eight points for his historical reenactment, and I got 11 for trivia. Um, I can't remember what Lucy got for her collage. It was a lot. I think it was eight or nine points. It was good. It was like a high point stay <laughs> I'm invested. I need to know who wins at the end of the year. I'll be just in shot safe. It's all good. Um, so, have any of you uh, read any other Christmas romances this um, festive season? Any recommendations? I I, I highly recommend it, in fact, because I read it the other day and I loved it so much. Oh. I a review, uh, and I loved it. It was so good. Uh, and so just so festive, just so much, so Christmassy. And um, also I'm a little bit in love with Rufus. Uh, but I think the next <laughs> to it because I do love he's got stock. He doesn't. I've been reading historical because I've been on a historical binge this year. So I've been reading the Tudor Christmas Tidings, which I think is a trilogy. Uh, but Jenny Fletcher's is the one that I've just read. Very good. Oh, nice. I've been reading a book called The Christmas Swap, which is basically like the holiday Mark 29, where the, the four friends all switch Christmases. So instead of it just being in England and LA, there's Denver and Melbourne and a country, I think somewhere near Oxford. And oh, it's just like every Christmas you could ever want. I'm like, oh, I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's slightly like, traumatizing. So I'm like, how am I going to recreate all of this magic in my personal life? Because, of course, all the fictional books can become real because it's Christmas. <laughs> that sounds so good. <laughs> they can be all the festive traditions that we see in your next festive Christmas book. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I had a cool thing last year. We were actually in New York a couple of weeks uh, before Christmas, and I'd never been to New York City 
in at Christmas time. And so I was like, I must go ice skating in Central Park because this is what all Christmas people do. And there, I found this, the only way to go first thing in the morning, which is the time I had free, was if you went to ice skating yoga. And I was like, oh, well, I must. I must go to ice skating yoga. And I only... How is that even more? I have no idea because it turns <laughs> out they weren't running the class. And then <laughs> the guy's like, no one's ever showed up for that. And I was like, well, I'm here now. And then it's my like, you must come all the way from England to do <laughs> yoga. And he's just like... Oh, it's so good, but it's just not on. I'm like, Kat, you read me some skates. <laughs> so we conceded, which is really nice. So I was there with a friend, and we go out, and, and it was private lessons. So it was we had basically half a ring. And I was kind of lurching around because I hadn't skated in ages. So is this one-on-one -on -one at this point? Yeah. This, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, and then Sorry, carry on. Comes up to you, this <laughs> you know, women have that mystery kind of between – 60 and 100 and you don't quite know depending on how quality the face cream is you just don't know so this woman comes up to me, in there. doing it all wrong and i was like what and she's like it's entirely inelegant uh, okay and so she takes me under her wing in a really bossy new yorky way and like shows me how to be slightly less inelegant than i was it's so, clearly so offensive to her <laughs> Oh no! We're not serious. A slightly more gifted skater by the end of that session. <laughs> well, um, on that, we're gonna take start taking some questions from the audience in a few moments. Um, so again, if you're watching from home, um, then please put your questions in the comments now. That would be amazing. Um, and just before we do that, we're gonna do a quick fire Christmas this or that round. Um, so I'm gonna give you each three quick fire questions um, of which you need to pick your preference um, as fast as you can without thinking. No um, Ellie, you're gonna be up first. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so real tree or fake tree? Oh, real tree. Red or green? Red. Egg or <laughs> Hot chocolate. <laughs> Okay, Annie, you're next. <laughs> okay, Christmas okay. music or Christmas movies? Movies. White fairy lights or multicolored fairy lights? White. Naughty or nice? Nice. Okay, Sophie. Um, angel or star on the Christmas tree? Angel. Mariah Carey or Michael Bublé? Bublé. And elves or reindeer? Reindeer. Reindeer. Oh, that's some excellent options. <laughs> I feel like I've learned a lot about both of you just from that. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily things you wanted to know, but. Conformative <laughs> 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 nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and now I think we're going to have some questions um, from the audience. So the first one is from Gemma. She says, hi, everyone. Mm. Which book is the top of your Christmas list this year? Mine or nerdy history one <laughs> that I screenshotted and what's up to my husband in a really subtle way. <laughs> <laughs> My Amazon uh, wish list was equally subtle, obviously, <laughs> around to all my relatives. Um, I have some drawing books on there to try and learn to draw better. Ooh. Oh, God. This is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> all the books. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, oh, this one is, um, I don't know, so what... Uh, this is from Rebecca, mm -hmm. and this is, what are your favourite parts of Christmas, and did any of you put your decorations up early this year? We didn't put our decorations up early because the traditions book stipulates that the Christmas book <laughs> goes up on Christmas Eve <laughs> Saturday, which is the first Saturday in December, so that's when we put our tree up. <laughs> and that is one of my favourite days because we get the tree and then we eat a lot of canapes while putting decorations on it and watching Christmas movies. Oh, that is amazing. Oh. Nice. Lovely. How about you, Ellie? We, yeah, we went slightly earlier, probably a week earlier than we would normally do. 
but because it's a real tree, I thought if I want, if I did it mid-November, which is when I started thinking about it, <laughs> the tree would look a bit sad by Christmas Day. So we held out. We, I do kind of a dance mix. Well, the lights behind me, for example, I put up six years ago and have been <laughs> <laughs> never come down. <laughs> it never come down. But this little guy is new. But that went up in um, September because I wrote another Christmas book actually in March. So in a weird way for me, lockdown has just been like this Christmas it's a year of Christmas. Yeah. And then the crazy thing is, three days ago, lost my Christmas mojo. <gasps> no. Yeah. Quick, have a mince pie. You're gonna have yeah. to. Oh uh, yeah, that's why I've got my uh my multi <laughs> the multi pack of reindeer antlers. The multi pack of reindeer antlers. If that doesn't help, nothing will. Yeah, <laughs> so that we want... can make this work, Annie. <laughs> so I feel like I could just be able to like. Oh no, other way. I know we have to do. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I so want it to ping on your head. <laughs> oh, really you messed him. Um, oh, and this one is actually for you, Annie, uh, um, from Katie. She wants to know whether you've actually ever seen the Northern Lights in real life. Um, I have, <laughs> that's my father-in-law ringing from Scotland, which is very near the Northern Lights, where I was hoping to see them, but not yet it's one of it's actually one of my dreams and I have a friend who she went up and did the whole like snowmobile thing and went up and saw them and said it was absolutely extraordinary but apparently there are certain nights in Scotland even on the mainland because my characters are up in a northern reaches island mm -hmm. where you can see them and since nightfall happens about like two in the afternoon <laughs> I'm never <laughs> hopeful that I'll catch them but no that is a dream yet to be realized Oh, one of mine as well. Definitely. Oh, and this is going to be our last question. Oh. So, last question is from Kirsty, and she says, "What is the most romantic thing you have ever done at Christmas?" Oh, that's easy. I got engaged at Christmas. Ah. Uh, actually, in minus four temperatures, my husband declared we <laughs> were going for a walk up a mountain to my favourite castle, which is my favourite castle. And I did want to go and see it, but not necessarily in minus four temperatures. So I grumped and complained all the way up the mountain until <laughs> <laughs> we got to the top. And I turned around and he was on one knee in the ruins and, and then yeah. And then we went and had a very long time in the white kind of pub. And then we went home and told our family who didn't believe us. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Ellie? Anything romantic but Christmas? <laughs> the most romantic thing I can think of is rescuing my now husband from my very large family. <laughs> <laughs> and he used to come for Christmas and end up staying for like a week in this chaotic house, which some years wasn't just the seven of us. My auntie and uncle and her four teenage boys were there as well. So his birthdays um, between Christmas and New Year. So I would always take him out and then um, we would always end up in this pub next to Lincoln Castle for some reason. And one year it was snowing and it looked like a movie. It was gorgeous. Aww. But I think just removing him from the house <laughs> with 20 members of my extended <laughs> family <laughs> was mainly what he liked about it. Aww. That sounds nice. Oh, and how about you, Annie? Anything romantic? Um, well, the first Christmas I spent with my now husband was, was up with his family in Scotland and I had wanted a dog for years but I worked in news and so was never home and couldn't have a dog and at the time that we met I was never home so couldn't have a dog and he gave the first present I opened in front of his family who I really didn't know on that well was a dog lead and I knew it didn't mean there was a puppy in the next room but it meant it was a promise of having a life a future together when we would have a dog and so I started yeah. Then his mom started boohooing, then his dad started greeting away, and we were all, ooh, and then Norman was like, oh, I wouldn't have given it to you if I didn't do all this stuff. <laughs> and then one of the first times when I got my dog, we got married, I got my dog, and um, I took her out, and we were somewhere on the farm, and I had to tie her to a post for some reason, because I needed to go do something with the cows, and then she ate through it, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's very good. good. At the farm. <laughs> <laughs> did you keep the remnants of the leaf? I did there? actually. You don't want it. <laughs> You've <exhausted. laughs> they can't let it go. <laughs> Oh, what about you, Charlotte? Well, me, I can't think of a single thing. <laughs> this romantic Christmas, I feel like that's the best is yet to come. <laughs> Yay! That's what I'm going to say, the best, nice. the most romantic thing is yet to come. Yay. Um, so thank you everyone so much for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure and such a pleasure chatting to the three of you as well um, and hearing all about your festive traditions and Christmas this year. Um, and Merry Christmas to you all. And Merry oh, Christmas, Merry everyone. Christmas everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you all. Happy <laughs> holiday.